Each year, Greg, you do several programs on fraud here, um, and we start off the year with phone imposters from the IRS. Why is that? Well, this is the single biggest scam going on right now in the country, Mark, one that has taken tens of millions of dollars from hardworking uh, Americans all across this country. And um, it's really important that we get the information out. It's tax season right now. There's mm -hmm. a lot going on. People are doing their filings. Um, and these calls are pouring into people's uh, cell phones and people's landlines all across the country. So really important to get this information out. In fact, if you wanted to rate, and you have rated uh, some of these scams, uh, the IRS scam is right there at the top. Absolute number one. We looked at this all across the country, which uh, scam has been reported into the Federal Trade Commission and the state AG's offices. The imposter scam is number one, uh, really going away. Uh, number two is a tech support scam, or one that is more commonly referred to as the Microsoft scam, where somebody calls you up, tells you there's a problem with your computer, you give them their ISP number, and then they find themselves inside of your computer stealing your personal information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the third is uh, foreign lottery scams, a really important thing for all of uh, uh, the RFD folks, uh, listeners uh, and watchers tonight to know, is that you cannot win a lottery unless you are in that country. So if somebody calls you up, says you've won the Jamaican lottery. Unless you are in Montego Bay, you did not win the Jamaican lottery. Good place lottery. to be, but yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But in all seriousness, right. yeah, those right. the foreign lotteries that uh, never go away. Never go away. Um, the next one, um, sort of sweepstakes-oriented uh, scams. These have been going on for a long time. They come in all sorts of forms, but particularly in the mail. Uh, you can really get caught up in those, and that's a long-time scam. And then finally, uh, what we refer to at ARP is the grandparent scam. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a, just a really horrible one where somebody yeah. gets information from your computer, they get your contact list, um, they'll contact a grandparent and say, uh, listen, uh, uh, Grandma, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm in Wisconsin right now and I'm in a little bit of trouble with the police and I need you to send me $3,000 so that I can uh, get out of this. Okay, don't tell Mom and Dad. And any grandparent, of course, is going to want to help a grandkid. What they don't know is it's a scam and they've just given their yeah. $3,000 away to a scam artist. And those are just the top five. There's That's a right. lot, there's a lot more. more. Again, we want to focus on IRS phone scams. And if you have had experience, unfortunately, or know someone who has, we want to hear from you. Uh, telephone lines are open. It seems there are always a lot of money that we can talk about in these scams. And Sam, some st just staggering numbers you have to share. And these are, this is only what we know has been reported. Well, I think that's the important point to make, is that you know, we know the amount of scams that are occurring, sort of where they're occurring by what's reported. But by some measures, that may be a half to a third of all the scams that are occurring. Mm -hmm. um, but what we do know is that the numbers are immense. Uh, we're talking about over 700,000 uh, contacts uh, into the IRS asking about you know, possible scam scenarios that are happening to individuals. We're talking about over 4,000, 4,500 victims, which translates into about $23 million wow. that we know of. That's the money that we know of that's been scammed from folks uh, through imposters, um, through the IRS uh, scam sort of whatever we call it, scheme that they're they're doing across the country. Right, and the phones are lighting up in a big way. That's why you wanted to bring this to the forefront right here and now. And again, a lot of money, a staggering amount of money, uh, money that few folks we know that nobody has any extra funds just laying around that they need to give to the IRS or anyone. And for some cases, uh, Sam, it may take life savings, unfortunately, as they think they're they're paying it off and they're in the clear here, and they've gone through all of their savings. That's exa And that's exactly why we're doing this show. I mean, we, we, these are pocketbook issues for people who, you know, oftentimes, depending on what stage of life they're in, you know, they may be in on fixed incomes, any loss of money. Sure. They can't make up again. And so we've got a really great example that we're going to share with people tonight of what an IRS scam call might sound like. Uh, we tell the viewers this is a really benign example. The guy is actually pretty friendly. Um, there are some that are much more aggressive. And uh, so I think we should take a listen to that so people get a sense of sure. if you haven't gotten one of these calls before, this is what it sounds like. All right. Hi, this is Officer John White. We are calling you from Criminal Investigation Department of IRS. The reason you're getting a phone call from a department is to inform you that IRS has got the other problem out for you. And your physical address it is under federal investigation. So call me back on my department call that number to get the detailed information about your case. It's quite important to hear from you today. Thank you. Now, again, that call we just heard, very tame. Maybe uh, either one of you describe, I'll start with you, Sam, what a, what a 
more realistic call might might sound like more threatening yeah exactly you know the, there might be the the threat of law enforcement intervention in their lives you know they may say we're gonna send the police over to you or the sheriffs to collect that money if you don't pay up right now um, they'll you know threaten that we're gonna um, you need to pay immediately right now on the phone there is no more waiting um, this is your only chance to pay up or we will you know send our investigators after you so they they get really involved uh, and really play on people's fears you know hearing from the IRS is not pleasant even when it's appropriate for them to contact you uh, and then to have this layer added on top is something that uh, most people just you know they 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 want uh, to do the right thing uh, but they also, you know, need to write, ask the right questions right. so they don't fall and, into a trap. And track. Greg, it it's always seems to be, a, well, from what you've described, uh, it's immediate. We need to take care of this right now or else. Absolutely. It's a fear-based scam, you know. Uh, and if you're uh, an older person and you're uh, living in a small community, you might be living alone and you're isolated, you get a call that's going to tell you that U.S. Marshals are going to show up on your doorstep in three hours or tomorrow morning. They're going to foreclose your mortgage. They're going to take your car. So if you don't get to a Western Union uh, or a MoneyGram outfit right now and send us that $8,000, um, you know, you could end up in jail, you could end up losing your home. Uh, and so people respond to that because they think, well, I thought I paid my taxes, but maybe I didn't. And I certainly don't want the U.S. Marshal showing up at my doorstep tomorrow morning. They grab their checkbook. They head off for Western Union, and that money's gone forever. Yeah, that's the unfortunate part. There's no way that I that I know of, and I you I think you've had, in our meetings talked about Mark. There's no way for those folks to get that money back for the government, anyone to help them. It's, it's just gone. gone. It's gone for good, and you'll never get it back. And that's one of the most terrible things about this particular crime is that there's really no retribution for the victim. You know, it's going to be impossible to find a, a scam artist in Moscow or Nigeria. It's also impossible to find one in downtown Nashville, for example. Uh, and you're certainly, under any circumstances, never going to get your money back, whether that's $500. And we know cases case of people that have lost tens of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. And as Sam said earlier, um, you know, when you're in retirement, you're living on a fixed income. You know, you're not in your working years anymore. And, you know, this is what you're going to get every single month. Any kind of loss in that kind of money can make a huge difference in how you're going to pay your rent, how you're going to pay your mortgage, how you're going to form your prescription drugs, how you're going to do the things that you need to do. This is just a terrible crime all the way around, and this is a real fear-based crime. And what they do is catch people off guard. I mean, if you're, if you're not prepared, and who, right. would, who would be to pick up the phone and expect someone to say, hey, hi, Betty, how you doing, and did you have a good holiday, or whatever it might be, and then they get that kind of a call, it's no wonder that they're easy prey, people that are uh, live alone, live in rural areas, I guess, and, and that's maybe something before we go to break, that rural America is hit just as hard as the larger cities. Yeah, and we don't have any specific data on that, none that I've seen, Sam, no. but I think that one of the things we know these people do is they try to target older folks and they try to target older folks who are isolated and living alone. So if I'm an older person and I'm living in a small rural community of a thousand or so people and I'm living by myself and I don't get out a lot, maybe difficult for me, I'm not driving anymore or I've got some physical issues going on, those are the kind of people that they're trying to get because if you can scare them, um, they're going to write that check real quick.